yo, yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Yo, man, this is the NFC South versus the NFL, and this your boy Mike Ricks, man, part of the Carolina Panthers representative, as you know. But um, we're gonna do this mock draft, man. I got one of one of our partners, DJ Hopkins. The old feeling real good, feeling real good, should feel real good, Bucket Oh, baby. Talk that, Girl. talk that. If you haven't heard, can't be Bucket Mears. Oh, wait, hold on. This is your boy, DJ. You know, follow me on Twitter at DJ Hot 25 because you know. Uh-huh. Bucket is hot time, baby. You want to know why? Because we got great. I mean, I'm here for it, man. Ah, let's go. <laughs> let's said, go. That nigga said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, man, let's go, man. We, we got Gronk, man. Ah, I, love, I love the pickup. Obviously, Gronk took a year off. Um, got to rest up, have some fun. And uh-huh. guess what? He bring his talent down to St. Pete, Tampa area, you know, Clearwater area, you know. Don't worry, he can have fun and enjoy playing football. And obviously, he has his quarterback, you know, the one that I'm a little down on. But, you know, whatever. You know, he's here, and we're going we gonna, to we gonna ride it out. And if you're bringing people like Gronk on, hey, let's go. Hey. Let's go. It's a, it's a, if you're a Tampa Bay fan, enjoy this moment. I'm going to just say that. Because y'all about to get so much attention out there in Tampa, man. I can just remember 2015 season for us, man. My Panthers when we went 15 and one. Now I ain't saying y'all going 15 and one, but <laughs> that y'all gonna make some damn noise, man. Y'all gonna make some noise, and I'm I'm here for it myself, man. I, I'm looking forward as my brother, as as my co-host and a good friend of mine, man. I'm happy to see this for you, man. You've been waiting for something like this for a long, as long as I've known you. And so you really get to experience this, bro. I think it's good stuff, man. I think it's good stuff for you. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, like we've been talking for a while, this team has slowly, even though it hasn't been the cleanest of building when it comes to building a team, this team has been built to win. I mean, it's, it's at its peak of where it's ready to really win now. And, you know, kudos. I'll give kudos to Tom Brady for this because he definitely looked at his roster. He yeah. looked at the coaching staff. Like, Tom Brady's not an idiot. I, you know, how much crap I give Tom Brady? Tom Brady's not an idiot. He looked at this team, the struggles they went through last year, and just knowing the persona of Bruce Arians and how everything works, and says, second year, shit. What my boy say? Shit. Right. So this team, I told this is what they're going, man. You know, it, it, yep. <laughs> I want to be part of this. Like, you want to call it whatever you want to call it. Tom Brady said, I want to be part of this because this team is ready. Uh, and then and when he came down here, he made a call to the Broncos like, yo, I look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, yo, we go there and win, bro. Have a good night, yo. Yeah, and, you know, they just makes a lot of sense. And he was just, came down, was like, yeah, girl, if you're coming back, you know, I'm going to call up to uh, Robert Kraft. You know, he, he owes me a favor. I got him six Super Bowl rings. We're going to get you down here with no problem. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> hey, Kraft, you know, I got you six, six rings. You know, it's over. You know, I still love y'all. You know, I'm, I'm going to be in the ring of honor and everything up there one day. But right now, I need Gronk. Bruh. They in the moon. They what? Don't you understand? And we're going to get to this draft, y'all. We're going to get to it. I promise you we're going to get to it. <laughs> Breaking news, breaking news. We got to get it out. Right. This is breaking news, man. So, hey, don't you realize y'all got Gronk and a seventh rounder for a fourth rounder, and you had two fourth rounders already? Yeah, I think we got for uh, McCoy. Either McCoy or Quine. I'm not sure which one we got it, uh, that second fourth yeah. rounder for, yeah. but it don't matter because, yeah, you know. Pick. Yeah. But, yeah. So now, Sorry, I had to get that out, y'all. I mean, you got to think about it. Grunk wasn't going to play for the Patriots, period. So you come out with a fourth-round draft pick. So you came out with something. Hell, the dude was retired. So you still, you come out with a fourth-round pick. That ain't bad. It's, it's some tight ends you can get in the fourth round. So, hey, that's not a bad move for them. 
but it's also no. a wonderful move for y'all because y'all didn't give up nothing but a comp fourth round to get Grunk and a seventh rounder. Shoot. All right. Man, right. that's a win. Right. That's a win for both teams right. when I look at it, man. Belichick, Belichick is a believer in his own system. Belichick knows for a fact. He like, give me more picks. I guarantee I can make another winner. Mm-hmm. I guarantee that's how uh, uh, Belichick's thinking right now. You know, he's looking at Tom Brady over the hill, in his opinion. Yep. And Gronk, you you don't want to be part of this anymore, anymore. So here, so let me get let me get one of them uh, fourth rounders, and I'm gonna continue with my a thousand picks they already got. What are they, like thirteen picks yeah. now? Right. Like right. you know what I'm saying? Like that he built that whole entire team. Absolutely, and he's gonna have to with that salary cap. So, hey, I look at right. It, right. So, hey, good stuff, good stuff. But breaking news, man, breaking news. Um, like once again, <laughs> once again, yeah, let DJ get it in again, man. <laughs> we gonna head over to this draft, so we um hopefully won't. That's our biggest today. Right, so we doing the NFC <laughs> South draft, so we're gonna be drafting for the. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Carolina Panthers, the Atlanta Falcons, and those New Orleans Saints. I probably should have put Carolina. We've been doing plenty of work on this. We've been doing plenty of work on this. So we definitely want to put that out there. This is not something we just like, oh, oh we yeah. know a lot of your players that are in the draft. You know, it's not like we just throwing, you know, shooting off the hip here. You know, we've done our homework. Right. DJ and I have been doing on the, <laughs> we've been doing the draft since the first of the year. Yeah, and the reason why we haven't posted this, we not we not like these other people out here that just on, uh, you know, willy nilly just throw stuff out there weekly to get like. Look, we both got jobs, we make money. <laughs> I, I ain't trying to make it sound like that, but like we we really wanted to get it close to now where it is right now, and give y'all an honest opinion as to why, not to click nothing. Obviously, y'all know we you know we we've always just done this for the love of it. We ain't do it for nothing else but it, and we're only gonna be honest about everything when it comes to this stuff. Thanks, my G. With that being said, let's open up the draft. <laughs> That's going to be crazy go. this year. <laughs> let's go. We are, we are going to do all seven rounds, even though I think the Panthers might be the only team with the seven. Well, my bad. The Bucks have one now. And that's something that you didn't have before. You didn't have a seventh round pick. Now you got one. I think that's going to be, be used as trade. Do I know what trading what? Nope. But uh, <laughs> I think that's going to be used to do uh, some kind of move in the draft. Because Jason Light is notorious for moving in the draft, especially in the mid round, to pick players up. Robert Aguayo. Right. <laughs> uh, well, he moved up to get. He moved up to get. Uh, I can't remember. I didn't do all my homework when the prize is, but we've we made moves almost every year when it comes to doing stuff like this. But uh, just want to make mention of that. <clears throat> Facts, facts, facts. Hey, man, I am very pissed off right now. Um, We're doing this mock draft. <laughs> we're doing this mock draft, and I've been doing this mock draft on it for quite a bit. Um, I use other ones, but Draft Network is probably one of the main ones I've used. Um, And I've been getting the guy I honestly wanted to get or who I thought the Carolina Panthers had number one on their board which is Isaiah Simmons. But as you see, he is gone, and he went to the Dave Gettleman, our old GM, New York Giants. So now, hey, let's talk about this for a second. Now, that was your man, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. really, really, this man really wants Isaiah Simmons. I mean, the trend... Formative player that Isaiah Simmons can easily be in the NFL. He he's gonna he can easily bring another dimension to what defense is gonna want to do in this type of time we are in when it comes to football. Um, and obviously Mike wants to be one of the first teams to have that type of player. I mean, <laughs> you should have. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense. I mean, if you don't know about Isaiah Simmons, all I'm saying is go look at him. Man, man plays about three different positions. I mean. You're talking linebacker, nickel, and he's also safety. I mean, this man can play like a robber type position and just roam around and play like Derwin James slash Honey Bradger, you know, playing a slot or a tight end or and I, I, dare I say I'm not gonna even put that far when it comes to you know, I'm not trying to disrespect the Panthers. Luke Keekley playing a linebacker in the middle but just being annoying and you just don't know where the hell to do that. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's what Mike thought this kid could be. And the lose out on him? Oh, I knew that hurt. That hurt. Oh. That hurt. Oh, it hurts. Like, man, look, I'm going to tell you something, man. Like, you hit it on the nail with Isaiah Simmons for me, man. Um, Isaiah Simmons can play multiple positions. You're talking about three positions. You, with your base defense, he can cover the nickel. He can do all, play safety. He can do all of that. And he doesn't just do it. He does the hell out of it, man. He plays really good football, so. This sucks for me. This sucks for me. So, um... Well, we're doing the for y'all, so we got to go back. We ain't... Nah, we trust. playing it out. Let's see what's going on. Trust. It, it's taking everything in me not to bag on, hit the back button, and edit this video. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going to keep it real with you. <laughs> this is the raw and uncut version. Nah, um... So... We got a pick, man, in our biggest needs. I'm going to give the top three. We got interior defensive linemen. We have cornerback. We have linebacker. So, with the available players, we have Justin Herbert, Makai Becton, Andrew Thomas, Derek Brown, and Mr. Out of Florida, the cornerback, C.J. Henderson who there's been a lot of talks that he could potentially be the best corner NFL-wise in this draft. Even though Akuda is ranked higher. There's been a lot of talk about that. So who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? But um, if I had to pick, this is tough. This is tough. I think it's no brainer. This is tough. But I'm going Derrick Brown. And you got to go. <laughs> I mean, hey, man. I mean, it's unfortunate because, like you said, the cornerback position is dire in the South team, right? So it, it it makes it difficult because, like you said, um, this player could be very, very good. But the safe pick and what Rule's trying to do and that team's trying to retool and trying to do, I mean, Derrick Brown is an animal, man. I mean, it's just. Yeah. And you lost out on Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons. You know, Derek, you know, he has to be the next one up. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just, he makes your defense better. And it's from the front to back, right? That's how you want to do your defense. Right. Um, so, you know, even though he's not the flashy, I mean, but this kid, like I said, I think he's the best thing we've seen since Aaron Donald coming up the draft. In my opinion. Right. You know, but, um, so I just, Derek, Derek Brown, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, you know I had to uh, have the anticipation and all of that but um, and, and give these other players just due. But I'm with you 100%, man. That, that's my choice, Derek Brown. It's a reason why our biggest need is interior defensive line. So, um, and I've always liked corners in the second, third, fourth round, that, that range. So, I think we'll be fine there. So, Derek Brown is the pick. Derrick Brown is an instant starter with K.K. Short. I'm saying it right now. You're talking about Brian Burns, K.K. Short, and you add a Derrick Brown with a more than likely a Stephen Weatherly, another young up-and-coming hustle guy that actually I, I think plays really fundamentally sound. Um, he does his job, and I, I guarantee you he'll see a lot of one-on-ones. So I like this pick, man. Let's go. I mean, that, y'all need to be competitive on that defensive line to be compete in general. So, uh, impact there like Derek Brown could definitely make a difference. Right. So, now, we have the Tampa Bay. Nah, I ain't going to say it. Buccaneers. Okay. Engineers. Uh, uh, what else? Whatever. The Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, anyway, the, the, what we got here? T- 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 Tampa Bay <laughs> Effineers. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, he talking about mothers. Like that. <laughs> right, so, so, <laughs> so this is who we got on the board, man. I think this is a no-brainer. Um, but I'm gonna read them all. Uh, I'm gonna just say the top five: Justin Herbert, Andrew Thomas, uh, Jerdick Willis, Jerry Judy, 
Javon Kinlaw. DJ, take away. This is your squad. I'm going to let you handle this, and I'll follow suit. Man, obviously your biggest need is uh, you have Tom Brady. Um, senior citizen backfield, you know what I'm saying? So, obviously your biggest need is going to be right tackle. Uh, we lost out to Mark Dodson. Not really lost out, you know, he's just old age. It's time for some fresh new blood on that offensive line. Mike, me and Mike have talked about this for a while. I told him since um, Alabama played LSU or Auburn, I can't remember what game it was. I said, who is this kid? Jedrick Wilson or Willis, Will, whatever his name is. I'm like, who is this kid? Because he is stonewalling everybody that's even coming in his direction. The Bucks need to go get that man. And then we're talking back in, like, November. Now you're telling me he's on the board right now? Look, yeah. I'm a big Ken Law fan. I would like to see Ken Law come here. Um, that would be my backup. Uh, Andrew Thomas, I think he doesn't have very much of a high ceiling, but he's going to be a good left, uh, left or right tackle because he can play both sides. And somebody you, you don't have to worry about, you can plug him in, and he's just going to be, you know, good. You know, but Jedrick Wilson, I, uh, Wills, I just think he – he has still a lot of upside to him. Um, and I just think it's a no-brainer. You got to – at right tackle. He played right tackle his entire career with Alabama. I mean, it's an easy transition for him. And, he, you know, like I said, he, he's going to be a really good player. Um, it's the number 14 pick, Tampa Bay Buccaneers pick, Kendrick Wilson for Willis. I can't say his last name. It's the Will. It's Will. <laughs> out of Alabama. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a no-brainer too, man. You got to go off as tackle. Have to. Jamar Dotson is gone. This is a day one guy. Um, definitely a future guy. So, hey, I think it's a great pick. Great, great value for the pick. He's actually the number 12 rate, ranked player when you get him at 14. So, there we go. I love the pick. I love, I love it. it too. Hey, it fell for y'all, man. So, now we have the Atlanta Falcons up. And their top need are cornerback, interior defense alignment, edge, and running back. So, All right. the, available, Take it the available players are um, Justin Herbert, Andrew Thomas, Javon Kinlaw, um, safety Grant Delpit um, from LSU and Justin Jefferson from LSU. They also have DeAndre Swift. I want to throw him out there because running back was a need. Um, and Dobbins next. So if I'm looking at these players, yes, I know they need a corner. Um, but like I said, I think they can get good value at corner in the second, even the third round, but definitely the second round. And uh, we know about the interior defense alignment because we've done a lot of scouting on them. They start to shorten out um, earlier than the corners, in my opinion. So if yep. I, I'm yep. them, I'm looking at Javon Kinlaw. My man, you hit it right on the head. If the left Falcons do not take Javon Kinlaw, they are a fool. I understand there's uh, a little bit of noise, and I did make a little bit of noise about uh, Kaysan out of LSU, uh, outside linebacker, defensive end, um, as a possibility. Um, because they just need somebody to scream off that edge that they haven't had in a while. Obviously, they'll let go of Big, big Beasley. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Ken Law will be a hell of a pick for them. Um, you know, what's his name? Needs, uh, what's his name? Dan Quinn. Yep. You know, still hasn't <laughs> remade that Legion of Boom. And, you know, during that time, they had some hell of five defense alignment, which they haven't really had in Atlanta, in my opinion. And adding Ken Law. Who already got Gar uh, Grady yeah, Jarrett? Yeah. Um, yes. You know that that interior. Whew, look, we got the Panthers, and now the Atlanta Falcons added to the interior line. You want to know why? Because you got to deal with Drew Brees, you got to deal with Tom Brady. That's what right. do they do? They rush up the middle, middle right? That's so right. it makes sense to go to Von Kimlaw with the sixteen, seventeen pick. Which one are they got? They it's got 16, the sixteen, sixteen. All right. Going with 16 picks, Javon Kinlaw. Boom! Yes, sir. Good stuff. Good stuff. This far, hey, so far this draft has actually failed pretty good. Um, you know, I know everybody's picked uh, Brown for us for months now. So, 
hey, offensive tackle for y'all. Y'all got a great one, in my opinion. And now they got <laughs> Falcons got Kenlaw. That's tough. The South, once again, is proven to be the best division in football, especially the NFC. I don't care what none of y'all say. Oh, it's going to be must see TV in the NFC South. Absolutely. NFC, NFC League, watch out. Because they're going to be watching the South this year. Mm-hmm. So, now we have the New Orleans Aints. I mean, Saints. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to put a little respect on their name. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it four time Oh, man. NFC Chat. They've been killing, you know what I'm killing the division, man. It's about, it's about to come to an end. Yeah, man. It's so, the, and this is what I really think can happen, and I'm so glad it happened this way. Um, the New England Patriots pick before the New Orleans Saints, and as you see, the New England Patriots have just drafted Jordan Love. So. They should. Right. So to me, it seems like in order for the Saints to get Jordan Love, if that's who their number one guy is, they're going to have to get in front of the New Orleans, I mean, uh, New England Patriots. You're right about that, Mike. I mean, I think that's the only team we were talking about this prior to coming on. Mm -hmm. Um, We couldn't really find a team that Jordan Love was really, like the Saints would really have to jump above. Look, we and me and Mike have talked about Jordan Love to the Saints for a little while now. Um, it's starting to pick up noise, you know, but prior to that, you know, call what it was, me and Mike thought. You know what I'm saying? He looked at this roster and was like, look, Jordan Love, if he makes it here, it makes so much sense for the Saints. Um, and if that's somebody they're really, really looking at, which makes a lot of sense that they are, yeah, the Patriots are the only team as of right now. But, I, you know, if I'm the GM saying, well, why did I get in front of to get this kid? It's probably I got to jump one ahead. To get to the Patriots, but in this mock right now, we haven't done any trades, um, so we're gonna have to look at it now and see if Jordan Love is off the board. What the Saints gonna be, uh, go after? It. So what we got going on here, Mike? So the New Orleans Saints' top needs are linebacker, cornerback, wide receiver, and quarterback. Well, since Jordan Love is off the board and Justin Herbert is off the board as well, um. I feel like linebacker is the way to go. So the top players left um, are Andrew Thomas, still on the board, DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, Josh Jones, and Jonathan Taylor. But then you move on to where you start to get some linebackers. So you have Patrick Queen, and you also have – Kenneth Murray, Mr. Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma. So if I'm making this pick, New Orleans Saints, and we've gone through a few of these mocks, you got an LSU boy out there um, that's actually rated higher than the next linebacker. And you know LSU, I mean, hell, they bring defensive talent into the league, man. So... I would say Patrick Queen would be their pick. Line Patrick up. Queen, yes. Uh, I mean, makes sense. Um, it, it, <laughs> I know New Orleans Saints fans would not be very excited, I think, initially getting this kid. Um, you know, if I was a New Orleans Saints fan, I would be, I'm not going to really say upset, but... I don't think you would get it. I don't think the value of Queen, which I could be wrong, at where you're at, it, it wouldn't line up. But it's still, you still can get a really good player. You know, Demario Davis is, you know, basically the other linebacker that's really good for the Saints right now. Um, but he's getting older, obviously. Um, yeah, Queen makes a lot of sense here. Um, and. Yeah, it's, it's tough. In my opinion, I think it's tough. I mean, you miss out on Jordan Love. I think Jordan Love has to be, like, you really have to make a big push for him in the first round because, you know, Saints are win now, and there's not a lot of things y'all really need at this point. Your team is what it is, and I feel like that's the team that y'all are going to really 
want to use to really make that Super Bowl run. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, right. can we get a quarterback to you know transition from Drew Brees, which I think like he's like my boy TJ. He's been kind of he hasn't been saying it, but he's been saying it. it. You know, it's almost time for you know them to move on from Drew Brees, and you know that's been kind of the talking point. Uh, how much more you know juice this kid, this guy, man, uh, guy, this man has in the tank? Could this be a Drew Bledsoe situation and Brady situation? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, Jordan Love, you have somebody like that in the in the in the wake, and he could come in there. And, uh, I don't know. It, you know, it's a lot of great things that come that way. But if we had to, you know, draft this way, Patrick Queen, man. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, man. <laughs> they get their linebacker. Um. First round is out the books, man. Out of the books. So we have Derrick Brown going to the Carolina Panthers. We have Jerick Wills going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We have Javon Kinlaw, which I haven't seen yet. But if he falls and he's there and the um, edge rush is gone, you got to go there. Great fit. Um, and then you also New Orleans Saints, man. Patrick Queen, linebacker. They address the need. So now we're going now, to now, hey, go ahead. Did um did Murray <clears throat> did was Murray off the board? No, that's what I was saying. Both of them were on there. You think okay. I, I mean I can see from from things that I've one read and I watched a little bit of film of him. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, you know, he you know he's yeah, I like him. Uh, he's very fast. <laughs> I mean, like I say, it, if it comes down to Queen and, and Murray, I, my bad. Like I said, I I didn't. I think I did hear you say it, but I, you know, I didn't. Um, there is a possibility that um, Patrick Mur- uh, Patrick <laughs> um, Kenneth Murray could be that pick. Like I said, he has elite speed, um, very rangy uh, playmaker from you know, all reports. I can remember. Uh, sideline to sideline speed. Um, obviously, um, somebody that's not going to be a liability in coverage. Uh, makes sense. Yeah. You know, makes sense. So, um, Absolutely. And was AJ Espen, wasn't it? AJ Espen was off the board, too? I think he probably was. He probably would have mentioned him. Nah, he, the defensive he, end. Nah, he's still on the board. He just went. Oh, shoot, man. Hey, man. My bad, man. It's hard. But, um, I think those are three players that are safe eyes if Jordan Love is not there. I'm right, going to throw that out there. Well, that, <laughs> well the, I mean, these two linebackers, you're talking about Murray and Queen, really, really, really up there as far as linebackers. And so the way the board failed in their top need, yeah, I know the uh, DN from Iowa seems like a great fit also. But I mean, if your top need is linebacker, yeah, it's like we gotta, you know, we gotta address it. So yeah, so pick your pick your players and uh, state fans. Let us know how you feel about Murray or Queen when it comes to this pick. We're gonna pick Queen just because you know, like you said, he he is Baton Rouge or you know, New Orleans person. But Murray makes a lot of sense here too. Let us know how you feel about that. I'm gonna throw out there. Right. I bet. Okay, so now we have the Carolina Panthers up in the second round, the 38th pick. We have the top need is cornerback, linebacker, and interior offensive lineman. Um, so, like I said, I think you can get really good value in corner in um, the second round. We also said that they could use a linebacker. So, let's take a look at what's on the board. So, you have DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, A.J. Espinata, the edge you were talking about from <laughs> Iowa. Espinacia. Espinacia, whatever the hell his name is. Yeah. Um, Espinenza, whatever his name is. Oh. <laughs> Zach Bond, uh, Zach Bond, uh, edge from um, Wisconsin. And you also have and I ain't even going to try to pronounce this dude's name. The corner from Auburn, Noah Igbeno. I don't know. <laughs> that guy, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's move it up, man. We, we read it off, man. Let, 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 you know, we, 
can he can play the whole move on the board. But can't just be the quarterback. Right. Well, it was just, you know, let's just get rid of all that BS, you know. Who's the top four, three players that we look at as cornerback? Because we're we, we not even going, we're not even going to entertain the other positions. Y'all, y'all got a hell of a pick in the first with Derrick Brown. That's right. live by y'all off your defensive line. Now we're going to the back end. Cornerback. What we got, man? Right. All right. So we got the Noah kid. We got AJ Terrell, uh, Trayvon from Clemson, Terrell. Uh, we have okay. Trayvon Diggs from Alabama. We have um, Damian Arnett from Ohio State. He was the other corner um, opposite of Akuda. Played really well. We got Cameron Dansler from Mississippi State and Bryce Hall. Okay. My opinion, um, I know it may seem like a reach based on some rankings here, but there are, after watching a lot of film, um, the guy kid from Auburn, the Noah kid, yeah, He's not bad, but in this division, I want somebody that's a little bit taller than 5'11", especially with us having Dante Jackson at that other corner. Um, I think we need a guy that has some size that's 6'1 or taller um, to match up with, you know, the Michael Thomas, the Michael Evans, the Julio Jones, that type of deal, um, similar to what we had in Bradbury. Um There is a guy on this board from Virginia by the name of Bryce Hall. Uh, You go to NFL.com and look at his football comparison. It's James Bradbury. Watched a lot of film. Watched a lot of film on this guy, man. I'm talking about great coverage, anticipation. To me, he's James Bradbury with better hands and ball skills. So to me, that's an that could potentially be an upgrade. Who knows? Um, the downfall with him is he's had an injury. I think it was an ankle or leg injury um, that pretty much he missed some significant time his senior year. Um, so that that's a little concerning. But, I mean, that's a guy on the board that I believe can definitely fill that role. You also have a kid by the name of Cameron Danzler uh, from Mississippi State. Who recently ran a four three seven four three eight um, at the pro day he had, um, and you're talking about a guy that's I think he's like six one six two, you know, very fast six two hundred eighty five pounds. Um, he's a playmaker, very athletic, long. I really enjoyed this guy. Um, I thought he came up and made hits. Um, you know, there are some talks about him. If you look at the scouting and all of that, man, um, what was I say? He, his best trait is zone coverage skills. They say his worst trait is physicality. Um, from what I saw, I saw him hit. So I I didn't question his tackle from my, um, view. But they say he projects to be at best a zone corner, and I don't know with Phil Snow if this was if this was uh, more of Ron Rivera's regime. I would say hands down this is the pick, but I don't know what Phil Snow is going to do in the film that I watched. He throws a lot of exotic um, coverages and sends blitzes and leaves some guys on an island, and you know a lot about that, BJ. So. If I had to make this pick, I know it seems like it's early, but Bryce Hall is my line, my cornerback. Makes sense. Um, you know, it, it's unfortunate that you guys miss out on like Trevon Diggs or, um, you know, CJ Anderson's obviously a little too rich, but, um, you know, at one point I think that we were able to get, you know, Diggs in the second. And I think that would be the ideal corner um, for the Panthers, just because he can do so many good, you know, things well. Um, you know, Bryce, he has the size, the he has all the intangibles to still be like he said. He was compared to be like Bradbury. He has the intangibles to be a, a formidable piece for the Carolina Panthers if you can deploy him correctly, like you said. The one question mark is the defensive coordinator, right? So we don't really know exactly what this scheme is going to entail. Right. But at the end of the day, you still got to deal with a 
Emmanuel Sanders, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, Brock, I mean, uh, Godwin, um, uh, Ridley, and Julio Jones. I mean, cornerbacks, are, you know, you need a third plus of cornerbacks. I mean, it's just, and at this point, you know, Hall appears to be the best on the board. Um, well. Everything you just said. Right. And and you, you kind of swayed me, man, because when we did a mock, I did have Trayvon Diggs as the second round corner when I did the mock. Um, and he's still on right. the board. He's still on the board. He's six two and he played receiver. So you're talking about a guy that um I on the board. No, no, you're right. You're right. He's on the board. And you you're talking about a guy that understands route concepts because he's had to run them. And one thing about this coaching staff I can say is that they value positionless players. Um, it's It's been said on a number of interviews and press conferences from Matt Rule that positionless players. We want positionless players. So when you got a guy like Diggs still on the board and that played wide receiver, plays corner, you're talking about a guy that um, NFL comparison – is to leave. I mean, shoot. Hey, I guess it's gonna be my favorite for now on. She, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, <laughs> I mean, you gotta go. You talk about Tampa Buccaneers. You're right. I mean, you talk about the first that Tampa Buccaneers fan. I wish we'd kept Keith Lee. You know, the antics is the antics, but you know, that's a hell of a player, man. Uh-huh. And you know, you're talking about big coming out of uh, what, he played for Alabama. What I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, coming from a, a hell of a school, a winner, you know, please. I, I like I like that pick a lot. I know you I knew you were a Hall fan, but if I didn't know Dick was still on the board, yeah, I, I would go with Dick. Uh, right. Yeah. So, um, forgive me, y'all. Uh, it, it, when I hit Diggs, I guess my fat finger didn't hit AJ Terrell, so that's, that's my bad. But we got Diggs. Diggs is the pick for the second round. For the Carolina Panthers. So now we have the Tampa Bay Effineers up. And their top need is running back, wide receiver, and interior or offensive line. All right. So right now we have on the board. <laughs> This to, this to me is a no-brainer. But DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, um, Ross Blacklock, who is my guy. And you got a receiver. Woo! Yeah, so. Blacklock? Um, yeah. <laughs> you know how we feel about Blacklock. I've been watching a lot of tape on that kid, man. He's special, ain't he? Damn! I like him, man. I mean, is my boy from Auburn going to? Uh, Davidson? I don't do it, is he? Um, uh, yes, Davidson is gone. Yeah, I, I figured that. I mean, he's, he, he, you know, if he was there, I'm sorry. I, I, I like Swift, which is obviously my top pick. But Swift is going to Auburn. Yeah, 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 Swift is going to Auburn. Oh man, you said it's a no-brainer, but I mean, Mm-mm. it's a no-brainer. And when you say that, are you talking about DeAndre Swift? Yes. When you say no-brainer, absolutely, DeAndre Swift, absolutely. Because I don't like, well, I don't like Rojo. I know you do, but I don't like him. So right, I right. know you can get somebody else later on. I get it, but Swift is still on the board. And he's special. And he's special. I mean, leaves. oh shoot. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, you're right. I mean, because uh, I mean, uh, I if I'm picking, like, if I'm picking, and you know, if I'm building a team, but obviously, Tampa Bay's in win now mode with the Gronk move and everything. It's all there's two positions right now that the Bucks should be really looking at right now: interior lineman, running back. And it's just because of the way you kind of are, you know, 
you kind of put position yourself on the off season, right? Um, right. So you know, um, who's your top interior? Is there any interior lineman in that area? Like I said, I think that right now is probably the two positions we're looking at right now. Unfortunately, like that, but black locker for how much I would love to draft him. I don't think a Buffalo would do that. No, I'd don't. be shocked. I don't really. I'd be shocked. You have um, Lloyd Cushenberry, the third. Oh, okay, yeah, they're going up. Um, so we're gonna take we're gonna take Swift just because of the talent he is, um, the ability. You know, probably probably the softest hands in the in the draft. I mean, obviously, SCC had a lot of trailing tires because they you know they had that uh, running back by committee going on in Georgia. Um, it just, you know, it, it's, it makes, it matches up too well if you have Swift on the board, uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, I, I feel like I don't have to go on much more after, you know, uh, Tom Brady Love, James White, players that could, you know, come out the backfield, catch easily, you know, natural, uh, uh pass catchers out of the backfield. Uh, obviously we're going to be running a Josh McDaniel style playbook in my opinion now that, uh, you brought Gronk here too, because BA system isn't really tight end driven. Um, so you can see a, a, a aspect of Daniel's playbook added or something like that. So just second round Teddy Buccaneers. I'm gonna keep it at that. <laughs> Bet. All right. So we have a guy, uh, well I shouldn't say guy, but we have the Atlanta Falcons up next. Um the Atlanta Falcons biggest need is cornerback. I ain't even gonna go anywhere else. Um <laughs> they have to go corner here. And I think there's a couple of guys here, and I'm going to read them off. Um, A.J. Terrell from Clemson. He's 6'1", 190 pounds. Um, you know, he's a terrific athlete with excellent um, pattern matching skills, quick feet, clean transition, and fluid hips. Um, you know, his NFL comparison is Drake or Kirkpatrick. He said his best trait is man coverage. Um, worst t- trait is he's grabby hands. So, you know, he might Carlton Davis. Um, so <laughs> that's who that's who he is uh, with the hands. So, um, you know, he's I, I think he's a heck of a pick for them if they decide to go that route. Um, if we go that route, there's um, Damian. Arnett from Ohio State. Um, like I said, he was opposite of a six footer. Um, comparison is Darius Slay. So, hey, best trait is man tech. Worst trait is tackling. So he's you know six footer. That that's another guy. They also have Cameron Dansler, who we spoke on with the Panthers, and Bryce Hall. And they also have the kid uh, Darnay Holmes. From UCLA. Okay, Jalen Johnson is gone, though, right? Yes. The Utah cornerback. Okay, so good. I think he was a wild card too. Um, yes. All right. So you're talking about once again, we gotta you gotta dive into the coach, right? Dan Quinn. Right. What is, What has he been trying to do since he's been there? He's been trying to mold the Legion of Boom, and he wants his defense to you know be more formidable, right? So. Um, he likes long corners, right? Um, you know, the Legion of Boom, when they were at their best, there was his own coverage. Uh, they didn't play a lot of man. They played on one side of the field during the time when you talk about cornerbacks. Um, you know, obviously Richard Sermon was the highlight of that team. Um, at this point, you don't really have a corner that's known for their zone coverage at this point. Um, I think you said it, uh, A.J. Terrell with his size. Um, and just for just raw ability makes the most sense for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think I, I'm there right with you when it goes to A.J. Farrell to the Atlanta Falcons. Sounds good. Breaks up a lot of passes, good tackler. Right. Um, you know, he has some interceptions. Um, yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I agree. All right. So let, 
let's see what we got. The uh, New Orleans Saints do not have a second round pick, so. Oh. Yeah. All right. So. Damn. The Carolina Panthers, their needs are linebacker, um, interior offensive lineman, wide receiver, and safety. So. All right. So go ahead, Mike. Let us know. Um, I'm tempted to get Bryce Hall. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get another corner. Nah. So we got um. You know, there's. I don't think that's close. I don't know. That's not far fetched. Right. I mean, I, I wouldn't be mad if he did that. I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't be mad if he did that. So we got a couple guys. We have some safety guys that are out there that I'm not too, you know, I'm not too impressed with at this time to go in the third round for them. Um,. Talking. You know, there's this kid, Terrell Burgess, that I, I have watched and I do like his game. Um for Utah. Uh I I do know we have I mean his strength his strength is man coverage. Um worst trait is ball skills and length. Um so you know, I don't know. I, I think if I'm going third round, what I Like I said, man, I'm going corner or interior offensive line. I know it seems a little crazy, but just looking at this depth chart, um, I'm not impressed with anybody on our roster except for Action Jackson. No one else has proven or done anything in this league. So that's why I'm high on corner. I think we double down on corner. Um, let's see. All right, you want me to read you the top well, guys? Well, yeah. Let me. Okay. So, so right now, listening to you and also obviously paying attention to your roster as well. Top needs at this point, which kind of line up probably with the draft and what y'all need. Because, I mean, shit, let's be real. I mean, you know language. But, uh, Panthers are going defense, majority of the draft. And it'll be the smartest thing to, you know, infuse that defense with just young talent, speed, you know, youth, youthfulness that, you know, just can fly around and make some plays. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you're looking at, like you said, safety, cornerback, linebacker. Um, right. So you got one cornerback now. This is now you. You are, you know, I'm an Action Jackson fan. You know, I was one prior to coming to the draft. Should have got him over MJ Stewart. But we're not going to rehash that. I already talked about that. Whatever. It's over. Um, you think that Jackson would be better in the slot? Or do you still think he's an outside receiver, uh, cornerback? Man, I think he's better in the slot, man. And I think at times he can line, he, he can also line out. Like, let's say against those smaller, shiftier receivers, I think he does okay. really well against them on the outside. So, like, I think he'll be a good matchup with Emmanuel Sanders. Um, right. That type of matchup um, versus a Michael Thomas. Okay. Um, mm. But, yeah. Now, Bryce Hall. Any linebackers you want? Any linebackers? No. I'm going to be okay. honest. I just want to talk about Well, I mean, they got the kid from Akeem Davis Gaither from um, Appalachian State. Uh, Logan Willis from um, Wyoming. Troy Dye from okay. Oregon. Like, I. No disrespect to any of them, because I think I can find one later on that can be these guys. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. No, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I agree with you there. I don't I don't think – linebackers are a strong class. I don't think people are really going to – after those first couple go, yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit of a stretch. To, unless you're a dire and a linebacker team, obviously we, we didn't look at all 32 teams outside the South 
to see who's probably more needy, who might reach for a couple linebackers. But as it stands right now, um, yeah, uh, it just makes more sense, safety or cornerback. And you're saying basically at this point, Bryce Hall um, is your thinking? Oh, yeah, hands down. That, that's my guy. Um, I mean, at safety, there are a couple of options. Like I said, you got uh, Kevon Wallace from Clemson. I do like him. Um, Terrell like Burgess him. from Utah. And, I mean, you, you got – Yeah, and then you got Geno Stone from Iowa, who I like, and I know you like him too. Yeah, I like him. I like his speed. But he's more he's more of a Trey Boston type player. So, I, you know, I don't right. – I don't need another one. Like we already mentioned Trey Boston. I, I think – Gino and you know Boston would be you know too many same things. Um, same guy. Uh, um, I think you can get kind of box safety at this point in the draft. If you tell me like like my boy Chin, uh, uh, what's his name? The one the small school uh, safety. He's not there no more. What's his name? Uh, uh, Diggs uh, or uh, Dubs? Uh, Kyle Dubs. Or dig something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Doug so he's gone. Yeah. So yeah, Doug, that's his name. Yeah. Um, he's gone. Um, so yeah, cornerback. I, I think double up at this point. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like we we keep on mentioning it. It just you got to deal with at least two receivers on each one of your teams. So, um, I yeah, Bryce Hall makes a lot of sense if he's still the top corner on the board. Oh yeah. A lot of range. You know, he's still you know big big receiver uh, cornerback six one. I know he had a little ankle injury, so that kind of limited him last year, but he's still a hell of a talent. And it makes a lot of sense for the, uh, the Carolina Panthers to go there right now. Right. So, agreed, man. Agreed. So, we got him, and I wanted to get him a second round, so I'm glad I didn't. Uh, we didn't do that. <laughs> Appreciate that. We got him in the third round. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like him a lot. So, we have next up for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A wide receiver, interior offensive lineman, and quarterback, and safety is four. So, yeah, we have give me the interior player. <laughs> give me the interior player. Yeah, I give you that, even though I'm my own wide receiver. This is a deep wide receiver class. Um, they're not gonna. I, I don't want to say they don't want, they are not going to, but it, at this point, you know, your 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 interior linemen are still pretty strong at this point in the draft, um, and you still have your questions of you know of um, uh, Kappa, right. you know, transitioning from tackle to guard, you know. Uh, obviously, we got Stud and Ali Marpet on the other side. You know, obviously, everything is set up to you know get the statue standing. You know, Tom Brady got to stand back there, so. Um, yeah, give me the interior uh, D lineman. I mean, D lineman, uh, offensive uh, okay. guard. I'm gonna, lineman. Okay. I'm gonna give you my guy who I've been picking, but of course, for some reason, I didn't pick him in this draft. I just love Bryce Hall and the value to him. Uh, but Tyler Badass. Yeah, Tyler Badass. All right. Um, who else is there? Is Robert Hunt still there out of Louisiana, uh, Fayetteville, whatever he is? Fayetteville, Louisiana, wherever school he's from? All right, Robert Hunt's gone. So, what, what's other name? I, I mean, I, I shouldn't even yeah. have to ask all this. Uh, I, I read what other guards do we have? Um, you have Nick Harris. I think from Washington. Um, Damian Lewis. Lewis. From LSU. Yeah, LSU. Um, yeah. You have Shane Lemieux from Oregon. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, you got... Nathan Newton. That's probably it. Yeah, yeah. From Fresno State. Yeah, that's it. Oh! I think that might be. No, I, I, yeah, I'm not going that far. But yeah, um, at this point, uh, look, Wisconsin breeds offensive linemen. I mean, what what else is there to be said? Uh, if you got Tyler Badass on the, fo- on the, <laughs> on the uh, board, I mean, it's got to be a no-brainer. I feel like he has a lot of flexibility. Obviously, he's one of the best he was considered one of the better centers in the NFL, NFL uh, college football last year. 
But um, a player like that, you know, she can easily play guard. I mean, the kid's a role grader. Um, once again, you you add him next to a Ryan Jensen. I mean, those two <laughs> those two personalities they're gonna mesh like a mug. Like those two type of people. You know, I don't know if you remember um, Almighty Duck, uh, the Bash Brothers. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Uh, issue. I mean, that could easily be one of those type of situations, those type of uh, personalities. You know, straight fat boy that like to eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you put those two together and the sound says, well, you know, give me Tyler. I mean, that would be uh, a good player. Then, like you said, I mean, uh, we got Jensen. His contract will be coming up. You can move him to center in the future. So, that's definitely uh, now picking a future pick and bringing that type of guard uh, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, I ain't mad at it. Um, I'm a little mad that I, I wanted him. Not going to lie to you. Um, so it sucks that he's going to your team. But, man. Hey, man. Bryce Hall was just too much to pass up. Man. Uh, you got too, too needy at that position right now. Absolutely. Like you said, it's too much. And... Absolutely. So, um, Atlanta Falcons, man. Now we're talking to edge, running back, and linebacker. So I'm taking Edge hands down. So we got a couple of guys here that we can discuss and kind of just go ahead and pick. Um, we got Julian Akowawa. I think that's how you spell it, say his name. What's your boy from Notre Dame? Is that the one you were talking about? That's uh, Uchi. Uchi, give me Uchi. He's from uh, Michigan. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got Curtis Weaver from um Boise State. You productive. Have, very productive. Yeah. You have um Jonathan Greenyard from um Florida. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you also have who else you got here? Ooh. Now that's further down. I went too far. You have Darrell Taylor, like from Tennessee. And you got Alex Highsmith from <laughs> UNCC, the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, my alma mater. Yeah, so. Um, so, take it away. That's the thing. Thanks. Um,. I kind of like this Curtis Weaver kid, man. Um, you know he 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 has a very high IQ. Um, you know he he his best trait is hands. Worst trait is twitch. He compares to Derek Barnett. I was very high on Barnett coming out of um. Tennessee a couple years ago. But, um, you know, he went to the Eagles and he's had a pretty good career. I like him. Oh, my son, dog. For real? <laughs> I mean, uh, all right, so basically with Weaver, I don't know much about the other players. I'm not going to really lie about that. Um, Weaver, the thing that you notice about this kid is similar to Derek Barnett. He's just a football player. Yeah, right. he, he's not one of those players who, you know, he's not an athlete. You know, he just goes out there and he just plays and he's productive doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's not pretty. It's not. You know, mm-hmm. it's not that, you know, uh, flashiness. But to be honest, the Atlanta Falcons need to get away from that flashiness a little bit. Y'all need to get football yeah, right. players. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, Weaver is a football player. And, you know, you've already added, um, you already added, you know, your twitchy player. Who did they get uh, in uh, free agency? Uh, I think it came from the Rams. Uh, defensive end. Yes, they had. Uh... Okay, he used to be. Uh, it's not an F. Who's playing for the Jazz? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not an F. Fowler. Fowler. Yeah, Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler? Dante Fowler, yep. Yeah. So, you know, once again. You need to add some youth to that line that can be productive. You got Ken Law. You got Fowler, who's probably going to be more of a 
um, specialist when it comes to rushing the passer. I mean, I, you know, he's battle injuries. I don't know if you want to keep him at the three down. I think Weaver can be a three down. Like, like I said, Barnett mm-hmm. is a great comparison. Um, I think that would be a really good pick for the Falcons in the third. Or are we in third? Yeah, we in third. So, yeah. I'll go Weaver. I'll go Weaver too, man. Great pick. And with these quarterbacks, we need that. So, all right. So now we have. The New Orleans Saints. Their number one need. Is, yeah, their number one need is cornerback, wide receiver, quarterback, and interior offensive lineman. Ah, uh, okay. Can I phone a friend? Because <laughs> I do have a question for TJ. I want to know their interior line situation. Okay. Um. Because you're still on a point where I think you can get a starter at guard. I'm not 100 percent because I probably I'm thinking Damian Willis or Lewis is still on the board, um, who I think would be a nice player to maybe put in the middle. Uh, or and to be honest, shoot, sell out wide receiver. I mean, you got Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, Sanders. Um, you need some juice in that wide receiver. Talent, talented youth. Obviously, you got Michael Thomas. Um, I mean, shoot! Every every team in the in the NFC South has at least three receivers, right? Yeah. Except for who? The Saints. So let's read some of these wide receivers. So that that might actually be someone we can look at. Or like I said, guard is a possibility. But you know, I feel like you know they always figure out their line situation. I'm not you know too concerned about that. Yeah, me either. Um, well, wide receiver. Okay, so wide receiver. I think corner. Will be okay. Wide receiver. They got Janoris Jenkins. All right, they got Janoris and they got, uh, which well, I know we mentioned PJ, uh, was it P- Patrick, whatever, what, Patrick Robinson, PJ, what's they got, PJ Williams or something like that? Yeah, Pat, slot. I think it's, yeah, something like that. Or Patrick Robinson, one of the two. Um, but I personally, yeah, it's interchangeable. We'll, we'll, we'll put that corner and wide receiver because I feel like third and fourth is really good rounds for. You can get a slot corner or a smaller, twitchier corner around this time. Or you can get, like I said, another dog wide receiver at this point. Because I think wide receiver is still really good at this point. Right. I mean, there's a gang of wide receivers on the board left, man. Um, You get, you know, you got TJ Higgins from um, Clemson. You got Van Jefferson. Okay. You got Van Jefferson from Florida on the board. You okay, got okay. Brian Edwards from South Carolina. Um, you got the kid Tyler Johnson. He's not. He's pretty tough from um, Minnesota. And you have. Oh yeah, I do like him. Courtney Davis from um, Texas A and M. Courtney Davis. I watch him. Uh, I watch him. I said he's a great route run runner. Um, Texas A&M wide mm-hmm. receiver Courtney Davis profiles as a slot receiver in the NFL, where his route running skills can truly shine in the short and intermediate areas of the field. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like somebody Drew Brees needs right now? Not really. I mean, like you said, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a Michael Thomas hater. I think he, that's his area. I think Michael Thomas eats that type of area. I think that's what he does well. He's not a, in my opinion, downfield threat. I think that that Ted Ginn role is something that's missing in that office right now. I think that takes the top off a defense uh, type of wide receiver. I know Jabril Davis is a little later in the draft uh, out of, uh, oh, man. I, you know, I, I like him for the, the, the state. So maybe corner. What, what corners we got? I mean, if you like wide receiver. Nah, I like, um, I like corner better, man. Okay, let's go, let's go there because, like you said, it's still a gang of them, and I think you know, in, in my opinion, if you you know, let me know if you you know kind of agree with it. Like I said, the digs and you know the, the drags. I think Michael Thomas eats at that all day. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is a you know a jack of all trades to do it all, um, but I still think they need that player that can just straight burn down that field and um, open up that that uh. Which uh, Sanders can do that too, but um, I don't know. What you think? I, I, that's what I think. Saints could use. 
I agree, man. I agree. They got um Troy Pride Jr. Um, from Notre Dame. That's still out there on the board at corner. Um, I'm be honest, I don't know too much about him. Um, they say his best trade is feet, and worst trade is run support. Um, let's see, he compares to Kevon Seymour. It says best trade is man coverage, worst trade is ball skill. Um, that's Troy Pride Jr. You have who else out here? Um, who else? Reggie Robinson from Tulsa. Mm, I like him. Yeah, he's six. I like him. He's six one. I mean, he got great ball skill. They say his worst trade is technique right now. Um, you know, I like him too. Yeah, but I don't. Mm. I know. I don't. I don't well, know if that's for him, them though. I mean, all right. So let's take a look at this real quick. You know, I, I don't want to go too far, but um, Janoris Jenkins. A little older in his career. Who's to say he might be better in the slot at this point? Um, maybe. You know what I'm saying? I think he still, you know, has a lot to offer at the cornerback position. Um, I Reggie Robinson, I like him. Um, I wish I knew a little bit more about the other corner so I can really compare. Um, he wasn't somebody I really looked at a lot. Um, I think that man coverage is his best. Attribute, which you know, I don't. You know, you already got playmakers as Norris Jenkins and and Lattimore, who you see somebody that can cover because obviously that's what uh been a problem with the third cornerback. So, right. you know, you can't throw that away. Um, but yeah, maybe that should be the pick. Um, he might not be the greatest, you know, player with ball skills at this point. But once again, who knows? I mean, if you're a good man coverage player, I feel like you know. I guess if you're not a ball hawk, you're not a ball hawk. But, I mean, if you can break up passes and, you know, not a liability in coverage, you know, that's good, especially with that type of defense they're running because they're running a lot of man in uh, New Orleans. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, what do you think? Yeah, I agree, man. I think we go Reggie Robinson. I think they need a corner. But no, who's the other kid? Oh, um, my bad. Um... Oh, yeah, Reggie Robinson, he's still a little raw. Yeah. He is a little raw. Um, I, I'll give him that. Well, he is. The other kids are really good at man. Yeah, he, oh. he is, man. And the other, this, this is the thing with the other kid. The other kid is 5'11". Um, it says he lined up as an outside corner for the Fighting Irish defense. Um, has significant overall athleticism. Says uses his size and length effectively. In the past game, he does an excellent job in zone coverage due to length. Um, what else? Let's see. He, oh, here go man coverage. He's pesky. Like a combative nature on the route scheme. His consistency in rerouting release can be a bit hit or miss. And his transition to flip and carry at too much, I mean, carry at times, get too loose and allows too much space. So, they say his best trait. Yeah. Is, yeah his best trait is feet. It is. Um, yeah. But they say, you know, he was a, Troy Pride is a high football IQ cornerback who has had experience running a number of coverages for the Irish. So it says that... And that's he, what I like. Yeah. That's what I like, the flexibility with him. I mean, he's a burner. I just looked up a little bit. I mean, kid ran like a 4-3 at the freaking combine. I mean, I, I think Todd makes a lot of sense. I think the more upside is Reggie Robinson. Cause like you said, I think he is. He could be kind of cleaned up, but he's a little raw. Um, 
So that that's the part that kind of makes me a little weary prize. I mean, you play for Notre Dame, very good school. Um, <laughs> like I said, a lot of intangibles, a very, he's not very scheme specific, which is really good. Cause like you said, you already got Janoris Jenkins and uh, Lattimore. You can kind of, you know, Dennis Allen, I'll give him a little credit. He, he can get a little bit creative, especially on like third downs and things like that. Um, having somebody like Prize, you know, you know, and being able to have flexibility to, you know, kind of play Lattimore, Janoris, and possibly this kid um, can offer some things in that secondary. So I would go Prize. Pride it is. All right, so now we are on the Carolina Panthers, who is linebacker, offensive lineman, wide receiver, and safety. Um, While we're here, we can make them a, a very good argument to watch out for the Carolina Panthers and make a lot of moves this, this draft. Absolutely. To get a lot more higher talent than we're actually drafting because of how many picks y'all had, right? right. So this draft, player-wise, we can see it dra- falling the way it is, but the talent of the player might increase because y'all have what? Like, how many picks y'all have? Eight. Like, 11? No, oh, we got oh, eight. Oh, okay. okay, y'all got eight. So still, you know, getting that top-tier talent is something that the Panthers will want to, you know, strive for right now. Um as you can see, we're going a lot of defense because a lot of defense was lost and has been getting lost for a while. And it's time to bring that talent back into the Panthers, and, you know. And, yeah, that's my piece on where we're at with the Panthers. I know some Panther fans might be like, man, uh, uh, but, uh, you know. Nah, I can see it happening, too. A lot of trades. Um... Okay, so I would say, you know, I, I've out, I've said we're going heavy defense, heavy heavy defense in this draft. I didn't really want but one offensive player <laughs> out of the eight picks. If we still left with eight picks, I only want one offensive player, and that would be a guard, an interior offensive lineman. So I would say this would be the time to go after one if one is available worth going after. So I'm going to bring up a few okay. names. Um, you got Ben Bredesen from Michigan. Young kid. Oh, no, I him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's um, 6'5", 200, I mean, 316 pounds, uh, you know, yeah, plays for Michigan. Right. Said he is um, doesn't have long arms, but he slapped together nicely with the frame engineers for guard play in the NFL. Nasty dude in the run game. Love how he finds leverage points on his opponents and turns them out of gap to create push. Um, you know, his strength is power. His worst trade is length. This said... Um, he was a four-season starter. Uh, the run blocking truly stood out, executing, executing from a pro system. Um, his game translates to the next level where he's comfortable rolling his hips into contact. Um, so that's a guy that, you know, I would say would be on the radar. Okay. Yeah, huh? Okay. You got um, um, definitely right. You got Shane Lemieux from Oregon. Um, you also have John Simpson from Clemson. Who else? Um, okay. That's your guard situation. That's your um, guard situation. So we can move and go to another position. Wait. So how many cornerbacks do we have for y'all? Because <laughs> y'all know the team that corner. Um, oh, we draft. Oh, what are we draft for y'all? We got two. We got two for y'all. Yeah, we so, got, I think... Yeah, we got Diggs and Bryce Hall at corner. Alright, so in my opinion, I know, you, you know you're you you're, you're a camping person. Right now, um, like you said, 
I'm looking at guard. And, you know, you probably don't want to uh, But I think running back is still a position, even though you got to back, three down running back. Um, if you have a player there like a Antonio Gibson, Lynn, uh, you know, that boy Lynn uh, out of Kentucky, um, I don't know. I feel like somebody with some position flexibility, um, I know you got, you know, you love your Reggie, uh, Reggie Anderson, or Reggie, uh, Reggie, Reggie. Bonifon. Um, you know, you got your Curl Samuel, DJ Moore, uh, Ian Thomas. Um, I still think you can add another playmaker because we're in the fourth round, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, Gar makes sense. Yeah, I guess Gar really makes sense here. Um, you can take some wild cards later on in the draft. Uh, yeah, the kid out of Michigan makes a lot of sense. Um, and what safeties do we have? Is, is Geno Stone gone? They are read. Actually, no, we can't go that. Yeah, yeah. I'll go guard. Let's, let's keep it simple. Go guard. Yeah, Geno Stone's still out there, but um, yeah, I, I just think at this point in the draft, fourth round, um, I don't want to go too <laughs> too far without getting another one. Yeah, and you don't want to go to you want you want talent, but you want to also be smart. You know, what I'm saying like, you know, it makes sense. Yeah, Michigan card. So, okay, bet. All right, so we're up. It is Tampa Bay. They're saying the needs are wide receiver, quarterback, safety, edge. Here's my boy, Jim Stokes, on the board. <laughs> Oh, I yeah, he's still on the board. Give me a. I'm sorry. I mean, right now, safeties, uh, we got Whitehead in the backfield. Uh, we do like that kid, Dakota Dixon, coming back. Um, you know, Evans is still a question mark. Safety is still a need for the Bucks because there's still question marks outside of Whitehead. I think you have players that can play that free safety position. But you just don't know. Like I said, Dixon is coming off. I think it's torn ACL. Evans has been out of football for now two years. You know, Gino, Gino Stone, I, I love his tape, man. I, I think this kid can easily be the player that we picked up uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken. Was it two years ago? I think it was two years ago. Um, I, I, you know, I look at that fourth round area, picking somebody up with that type of talent, see range. I, I give me give me stone man. I, I like him. Um unless you have something I know you said wide receiver, you probably want to look that direction. Is there anything there that you want to make uh with players when it comes to wide receiver? Um at wide receiver. Because you know that was a position I was thinking about. Um you got the kid from Texas A and M, Courtney Davis still. Um, okay. Ch- Chase Claypool from Notre Dame. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Quintez Cephas, Cephas from Wisconsin. Um, oh, I like that kid. Yeah. Like that kid. Yeah, I know him. And Darnell Mooney from Tulane. I still feel like wide receiver, you can still pluck it. Like I said, I mean, we're, we're dealing with now a Tom Brady style of playing. Uh, you know, I don't think wide receiver, I wouldn't be surprised if we do go wide receiver early, but I think the value of Geno Stone at this point makes more sense than, you know, pick up another wide receiver. You know, you do have Justin Watson, who now this is the third, third year. He's been at NFL for a little while. You know, I think. 
you know, Brady will help, obviously, with some of those young players, Scotty Miller. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel like you still need a lot of help on that back end of that defense. So, uh, Gino Stone, personally, in my opinion, I think that should be the pick. Okay. Sounds good. I agree with you 100%, man. 100%, especially the value. The value at this position right now um, and the player is somebody that I think can fight for a starting job. All right, Geno Stone. Now we have the Atlanta Falcons. Their biggest need is running back, linebacker, interior offensive lineman. I think running back is a place they're looking at. I do too. I really do. Uh, Freeman gone. Coleman gone. I know they like uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name that they got? I know you know that. Smith. I do. I thought you know Smith. You know Smith. Right. But running back by committee. I know Dirk Cutter is not a big rookie running back fan. But look, Dirk, things haven't worked out the way you like it to work out sometimes. Maybe you'll ask you to learn a little different these days. And uh, <laughs> kind of get these running backs to be a little quicker and try to get them to play, you know, to help your offense, in my opinion. Right. So you got LaMichael Prelong for Florida. A few hours. Yeah, I like that. You have A.J. Dillon, the big beast back from Boston College. Um, Keyshawn Vaughn for okay. Vanderbilt. You have Joshua Kelly from UCLA. Yeah. Big fan. Yeah, I know. So that's who you have at the running back position. All right, kick it off. What you think? Do we have Pounder? Or do we need somebody with some more flexibility or break? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they selected, I don't know, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they went linebacker here. And the reason why okay. I say that is... Campbell's gone. And that was a starting linebacker for them, if I'm not mistaken. Um, You can fact check me to make sure. But, um, and you never know. You you had your boy, Deion Jones. Yeah, he played last season, the whole season. But you never know. He may suffer another injury. Where's your depth there at linebacker? So... I would say they would look towards going linebacker. Okay, and I guess the question is, what kind of talent do we have at the linebacker position? That's true. All right, so we have a few. We have an Evan Weaver from um, Cal. We have David Woodward from Utah. Marcus Bailey from um, Purdue. You have, and that's my pick, man, but you have Michael, Michael Waller from Fresno State and who else? That's probably about it. Shaquille Quarterman from Miami. I like him. But I don't know if you get him in the fourth round. Yeah, you don't know which one. Yeah. Uh, he'll be um, there is a player by the name of Mike Marcus Bailey that I am really high on. Really high. I'm, you're talking about somebody that has a heck of an IQ. Um, can cover his butt off. Um, and he flies around from sideline to sideline. I don't know who I would compare him to, but I liked him a lot. Um, the film, I watched. 
There's another guy by the name of Evan, that Evan Weaver kid from California. Um, his greatest strength is run defense. His worst trait is um, range. So, they say his well, that's the one thing about you know, um, the draft is mine's to be limited. Um, range wise, that, that's what the NFL is, and that people are going to take more chances early on players that can be more rangier. And, you know, and so they're going to have a lot of them. Downhill tacklers and stuff like that. This point of draft, so, um, that Bailey kid you mentioned has upside because he is he can cover. Um, you know everything else that you said just makes sense um, as an interior linebacker. Right. So I mean. I don't know. I, I like, yeah, I like him a lot, man. I, I think he does pretty well. His best trait is football IQ. Um, his worst trait is explosiveness. So, I mean, that, that's the Bailey kid. I mean, you're talking about a high key, high IQ football player. It's saying super intelligent defender who trusts his keys and is quick to process. Um, there's been no shortage of roles he's been assigned at at college level, and he comfortably and quickly identifies needed action at the snap. I mean, he's a hard-nosed, tough, and fearless tackler. He'll fly in the gaps at full speed and look to wrap and roll on just about anyone. I mean, I... I like him. I like everything. I just look him up myself. Um, I like everything I'm hearing. He's on the right side, which, you know. Injury? He has the talent. Is that knee injury that he had. Right. Um, and, you know, they're making mention that he should have took the medical red shirt here. So, I, I, you know, them saying something like that, I don't. How nasty was the knee injury is my question. But, I mean, I think it makes sense. Um, but if you're looking for a player to play right now, um, right, that that's the one thing that my question is. Um, now, did you say the kid? So you said Quarterman's also there. Yeah. Um, did you say who was the other? Uh, you made like three, three or four linebackers that were yeah. around that area. Evan Weaver. We wrote that. And Devon Taylor from Colorado. Um, Weaver, I do remember Weaver. I think he, I'm not mistaken, I think he was a really good, like, he's a tackle machine. Like, I think he's one of those players that fly around. It's always around the ball. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think, I, I remember Weaver, I was looking at him for the too. Um, This is the guy. I thought so. So he's a really good tackle. He flies on the ball. Um, very distinctive. Um, makes a lot of plays in the back of the play. Um, yeah. I think he has a lot of potential, but they're saying he possibly could be an undrafted player, which I think is very interesting. Um, so we also I have... What, what about there, there's a running back from um Appalachia State, uh Darrington Evans. Um, he gets a lot of high praise. They said his best trait is shiftiness. Uh, one of the scouts said his worst trait is vision and power, but it's funny because the other scout loved his vision. <laughs> So, yeah. I don't know. They said Darrington is one of the more exciting rushers in the 2020 NFL draft. Evans showcased excellent field vision, short area quickness, and tampered speed, and tampers his speed like a pitcher to lull defenders to sleep before slamming on the gas for a big game. 
So sounds to me, he sounds like uh, the boy of the Bears uh, came out of North Carolina and uh, uh, Tyreek Cohen? Yeah, I think he sounds like he has a lot of intangibles. Uh, yeah, and I don't think that's a different dynamic that the Atlanta Falcons could use. Um, Absolutely. And he, I mean, he's a bigger yeah. version of him, too. He's 5'11". So. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that. What you think? Yeah, I think we go there, man. Cool. All right. So we got pick for the Falcons. Now... The New Orleans Saints. So we've drafted linebacker, we drafted corner. So now you're talking about wide receiver, quarterback, interior lineman, wide receiver again. So to me, this looks hands down a wide receiver. Oh, hands down. This is where, this is where I thought it would be anyway. Looking at a wide receiver at this point. All right. So <coughs> we still have on the board. K.J. Hill from Ohio State. Okay. They like Ohio State guy. Um, you know, Ohio, uh, Ted again, Michael Thomas. Who knows? Um, Darnell Mooney. They still have Courtney Davis. Lynn Bowden. Woo! <laughs> I would hate them again. That screen, Sean P. I know. That's thing, I mean, they didn't sign, what you call it again? What's his name? Uh, uh, wide receiver slash, quarterback slash. Yeah. Um, Jack of all Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember his name right now. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, yeah. So, I mean, if you want a younger, cheaper version of him, you go Lynn Boulder. I would hate for them to get him. I'm not even going to lie. I love that kid. Like, oh my god! Ah, that's a Sean Payton pick. I know, man. I I gotta pick them for them. Damn it! <laughs> god, that's one of my favorite players in the draft. If I'm looking outside of him, I would say maybe Courtney Davis, but. Like I said, he's not taking the top off, but he is running the heck out of his routes, bro. Yeah, I like him. I think he is an option, but that's that Lynn Bolton kid. That, 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 that green is Sean Payton. I agree. Green. Position his players on offense. You could put him, oh, man, you could do all kind of stuff with him, bro. Don't be started. Yeah, you know, I, I know I'm going to that. He's going to be special. I think he's going to be special. Right? The game is too much for him. He's going to put the work in. That kid is going to be special. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you got another, that other kid you were talking about, KJ Hill. You know, he, he says projects as a viable deep receiver and a potential starting slot at the NFL level. Um, he offers polished route running and high IQ, often finds soft spaces in the secondary to make himself available for his quarterback. Um, you know, he has some issues. They say his explosiveness and being physical is probably um, lacking or worse trait, and route running is his best trait, so. I think he's a really good pick still left on the board. But I don't know. I'm with you, man. I think that screen Sean Payton and Lynn Bowden would be a great addition to what they like to do. Right. If you can't re-sign Payton, that option of the way you write your offense, not go missing them because you have hope. Right. Who's even talking about that? <laughs> this is the same story. What? Yeah, 
So we have the Atlanta Falcons again. Okay. And we went running back last time. Um, there are a few edge guys on the board. There's biggest need still is linebacker, interior offensive lineman, and offensive tackle at this point. So um, maybe they go linebacker here? Yeah. I think they're going to pick a flyer on a linebacker at this point that got certain tangibles that they like. Um, who's the top quarter missile there? Yeah, Marcus Bailey's still there too. I'm happy we didn't six. We didn't reach at all. Right. At all. Every last one of the linebackers that were there when they picked are still there. Okay, so this is where Bailey is. If you want to go with Bailey, we're now fifth. Yeah, I, I think this is a move for him, man. I really like out of I watched a lot of linebackers, man, and he just was so intelligent. And I think he can he can definitely replace an AJ Klein. Definitely. Okay. So I would go baby. And that's that's a guy I want on my team, to be honest. That's the linebacker I would love to pick. So if he's there. So Bailey, it is. I like, I like, I like. Yeah, man. Thank y'all for hanging in there with us. Um, shoot, man, we went quite a long time. I know it's about an hour and a half. Um, actually, an hour and yeah, about an hour and fifty minutes, almost two hours with this draft. So thank y'all for lasting this long. Um, probably would have went another hour or so going to the seven <laughs> round. So that's why we cut it short. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Y'all let us know what you think. Thank you again for the love, support. I am your Carolina Panthers representative. As you see, we address needs, guys. We address some needs. And I really like the picks that we made. Yeah, this is your boy, DJ. Tampa Bay Buccaneers representative. Appreciate y'all sticking with us. And uh, like, subscribe, comment, let us know. Um, we'll put each pick, I guess, individually for each team. Um, up as well. Um, like I said, follow me on Twitter, DJ Hop 25. And yeah, man, we out. Yes, sir. And we out.